Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, we continue to see the surrounding enemies of Israel forming a confederacy, confederacy excuse me, and strengthening their alliance to attack Israel. In fact, this is just in from the Jerusalem Post. Fatah and Palestinian Islamic Jihad join forces to fight against IDF, which is Israeli uh, Defense Forces. Despite the differences between the two groups, they have increased their cooperation in recent months, both in Jenin and Nablus. So now we have seen Fatah strengthening their alliance with the other surrounding enemies of Israel. This is huge, folks. Now, why is this significant? That we continue to see the surrounding enemies of Israel joining together, forming a confederacy to attack Israel? Well, I'll tell you why. When you go to the book of Psalms, go to chapter 83, the prophet Asaph says the following. I'm going to read the first five verses here first. Keep not those silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And then when you go read through verses 6 to 8, you will actually see this confederacy. You look on the left there, you will see um, the ancient names right here. Tents of Edom, Ishmaelites, Moab, Hagarines, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Tyre, and Assyria. And on the right side, you can see what it's referring to. You have the Palestinians, the Southern Jordanians, the Saudis, uh, the Egyptians, Hezbollah, Northern Lebanese, the Arabs of the Sinai area, Hamas of the Gaza Strip, uh, Fatah, uh, and the Northern Iraqis. So we're told very clearly in Psalms 83 that there is this confederacy that forms. And their whole mission, their one objective, is to join together to attack Israel, to wipe them off the map. So that the name of, so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now there's a lot of people that say, oh, Psalms 83 has already been fulfilled. And they'll explain why they believe that. I don't have time to go into all the research. You can do it yourself. But I think it's very clear when you look at currently the surrounding enemies of Israel, and what's actually described in Psalms 83, I believe that's what's what's coming, and it's coming very sh uh, shortly. It's actually forming before our very eyes right now. But we're also told, when you continue to read in Psalms chapter 83, that God will defend Israel and destroy these surrounding enemies that attempt to destroy Israel and wipe it off the map. In the aftermath of this war, after this war is over, I believe we will see the Antichrist, Confirm the covenant with many. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Uh, he's going to confirm the covenant with the many, these surrounding nations that attempt to destroy Israel. Uh, and also, uh, this is what's described in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Israel is going to enter into this covenant with death. It's going to look good. It's going to smell good. The Antichrist will confirm the covenant with Israel and these surrounding enemies this covenant with many, and once that happens, that is going to start the seven-year tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. Part of this covenant with the many that is coming after this war, uh, I believe it will be allowing them to rebuild the coming third temple. Here's why I believe that this war is still coming, folks, and it has not been fulfilled yet. Uh, if you remember... In late May and June of this year, we saw Israel hold its largest ever military drill titled with the name Chariots of Fire. Again, 
Late May going into June this year, Israel held its largest ever military drill with the name Chariots of Fire, involving all the different parts of Israel's military where it actually prepared for a war on all fronts. Actually, this military drill they did is basically preparing for exactly what's coming, what's recorded in Psalms 83. If you remember, last year we saw the 11-day skirmish between Israel and Hamas. Um, then this year, just a couple months ago, we saw the skirmish between Israel and Islamic Jihad. Recently, we've been seeing the constant threats of war from Hezbollah. Uh, Hezbollah and Islamic Jihad stayed out of the fight last year when Israel had that skirmish with Hamas. Uh, and it, Hezbollah also stayed out of the recent fight that happened a couple months ago with Islamic Jihad. Uh, but we just continue to see this confederacy of nations not having just these little skirmishes with Israel, but they're all joining together, forming this confederacy, exactly as is outlined in Psalms 83. There has been many meetings between these surrounding enemies of Israel in the last few months, and they have one common goal, just as recorded in Psalms 83, to wipe Israel off the map so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Here's the whole point, folks. If we see this future war taking shape and the alliance strengthening in this confederacy with the same goal to destroy Israel, and this is the war that the Antichrist will rise from the ashes to make order out of chaos and confirm this covenant with Israel and the many, the surrounding enemies of Israel, and we know the rapture of the church happens before the Antichrist can even be revealed, and before he can confirm the covenant with many, to start Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period, how close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. But the main thing I wanted to share with you today, again, when this came in from the Jerusalem Post, I said, folks, this is right in our face. We continue to see this alliance strengthening, this confederacy growing, exactly as outlined in Psalms 83. Again, Fatah has now joined this confederacy. Just in, Fatah and Palestinian Islamic Jihad join forces to fight against IDF. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this road right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you that you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you can never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified, and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment, it's eternal separation from God, I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. 
Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. In John 14, 6, we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Acts 4, 12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, we read, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary will not save you. Buddha will not save you. Allah will not save you. Muhammad will not save you. Dead saints will not save you. The New Age movement will not save you. Religion will not save you. Your own human effort, you trying to earn your way there, that will not save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that can save you, and that is Jesus Christ in him alone. I am begging you, I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.